Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. I got my daughter there to remind me. Ephesians 6, 18 through 19. Praying always with all power and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel. Mysteries. What's mysterious about the gospel? What's the mystery about the gospel? Part of it is, you know, we read in Daniel where Daniel seen a vision and God was, the angel was giving him the interpretation of the vision and he was getting ready to write down that interpretation and the angel said, seal this up. For this is not to be known till the last days. There are mysteries in God's Word. But today we're not going to be talking so much about mysteries as we are going to be talking about the whole armor of God. Pray in the Spirit. Pray without ceasing. In another, another verse we find, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 17, it says, pray without ceasing. Well, how do we pray without ceasing? How can we continually be in prayer? Through the Spirit, through our prayer language. The Spirit can pray through us when we don't know what to pray. The Spirit can pray for us. Before I ever received the baptism in the Holy Ghost, I used to be driving down the road. This was back when... We spent more time in Enid than we did in Sealing. You'd be driving down the road, and you just hear this stuff. No words coming out, but you just hear in your mind. There's a spirit just praying. And sometimes he was really praying hard. I was just too hard-headed to hear. But why are we to continually pray? You know... Uh, Jesus tells the story of a, a, a widow woman that kept going back to this judge demanding justice. Give me the petition that I ask. And she kept, he said no. And she just kept going back, kept going back, kept going back. It was an illustration of us, of how we are to pray. We pray and we pray and we pray till we get the answer. Daniel, chapter 10. Daniel had gotten a vision, and he had been praying for the interpretation. In Daniel, chapter 10, in verse 10, and suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees, on the song, and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking these words to me, I stood up trembling. And then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. The very first day Daniel prayed, God heard him. And God sent the answer that day, right then. But it didn't show up that day. But Daniel didn't quit praying. He kept praying. And he kept praying because he knew that God would give him the answer, that God would give him the interpretation of this vision that he had just seen. And listen, 
I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now, he wasn't fighting with the literal king of Persia. He was fighting with the devil. The devil had inhibited him from coming and giving Daniel the answer or the interpretation of the vision because the devil didn't want him to get that message. Sometimes when we pray and we don't think we're God's hearing us, we don't think our prayers are getting past the ceiling, we've got to understand that God hears and God sends the answer. But sometimes there are things that inhibit the answer from coming. And most of the time, it's the devil. Remember here a few weeks ago, I, showed an, I told you about an illustration that Dwight used? He had three balloons. One balloon was on a long string. This is Jesus sitting on the throne beside the Father. The other one's down here. This is man on earth. Jesus left his place in heaven and came down to earth to be like one of us. Why did he have to do that? Because in the heavenly realm, that area between heaven and earth is the devil and all of his demons inhibiting our prayers and the answers to our prayers and fighting with the answers, the angels that God is sending the answers through, fighting with them, keeping them to, from getting to us to give us the answer that we want. But we have got to continue to pray. We can't give up. We've got to be like that lady before the judge says, give me what I want. And he finally said, okay, if you will shut up and leave me alone, you can have your answer. So he give it. God sends the answer. But things inhibit. That's why Jesus came to be as a man. He came to walk this earth just like you and I have to walk this earth. He suffered with every temptation that we suffer. He suffered with every heartache that we've had to suffer. He knows. How does he know? Because he left heaven and came down here. And then he suffered death on the cross. He suffered that humiliation, that beating that the Romans give him. Why? So that when he was resurrected three days later, he went back to heaven and destroyed everything that the devil and his cohorts are doing in that heavenly realm. And we know that he's there because he is called in the Bible the prince of the power of the air. When Adam sold out to Satan, he gave Satan the keys to this kingdom. He's a ruler of this world. Jesus Christ defeated him at Calvary and gave the keys back to us. We have to take them and we have to take hold of them. There's a I found this digging through some stuff at the, up in the old storage building the other day. And I, it's called the Life Connecting Bible. And it's pretty cool. Listen to what I just read here in the New King James to what it says in here. Let me find verse 12. And then the man said to me, Daniel, do not be afraid. Some time ago, you decided to get understanding and to humble yourself before your God. Since that time, God has listened to you, and I have come because of your prayers. But the prince of Persia has been fighting against me for 21 days. Then Michael, one of the most important angels, came to help me because I had been left alone, left there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people because the vision is about 
the, a time in the future. The devil was fighting him. But the archangel Michael came and helped him get that message through. He does the same thing for you when you pray. If the devil inhibits the answer from coming, if it takes Michael the archangel to come and help get that message through to you, it will happen. Keep praying. Don't give up. Trust God. Pray without ceasing. And we know that the devil is always pestering God about us, especially when we are doing what we want, we're supposed to be doing. And we can find that in Job chapter 1. In verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Or from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and walking back and forth on it. Satan is in control of this world. And when we do something that we're not supposed to do, What's the first thing he does? He runs right to the father and says, Do you know what Kobe did? God said, Yeah, I know what he did. And Jesus said, Dad, he's mine. He messed up, but I got it covered. He said, I'm sorry. I got him covered. The devil can't mess with him. But he is always, you know that little, when you do something you shouldn't order done and you knew you shouldn't order done it? That little feeling you get, I thought you was a Christian. You told everybody at church you was a Christian. And you go and do something like that? That's the devil. That's the devil. We need to remember what the Bible says about the devil. Resist him. Don't holler to Jesus to do something about him. You do it. Jesus gave you that power to mess with the devil. You do it. Ephesians chapter 6. Now we're going that's to, that's the, what do they call it, the preface? Now we're going to get into the meat. We're going to get into the message. We're going to get started here now. Ephesians chapter 6. As soon as I can find it. Somebody moved it. It is. Yep, it's there. It's on page 1455. <laughs> 1804, okay. Finally, my brethren, verse 10, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. This book says in his mighty power. Be strong in the Lord and in his power. We don't have to do it in our power. We can't do it in our power. But guess what? When he rose from the dead and sat down at the right hand of the Father, and when we accepted him as our Lord and Savior, we became joint heirs with Christ. We're his brothers and his sisters. We have been adopted into God's family. So guess what? Everything Jesus had, we got. So we can use his power to resist the devil. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Doesn't say so that Jesus will do it for you or that God will do it for you. It says that you can do it. I liked how this, I got this out this morning. And I just love the way this said this. Finally, be strong in the Lord 
and in his great power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can fight against the devil's evil tricks. This is the Life Connecting Bible, and it's an NCV. I don't have a clue. Like I say, it was in a box of stuff. I was going through some stuff up there in the storage building the other day, and I come across this, and I thought, hmm, I'm going to take this to the office. And this morning, I just got it down, and I read this, and I thought, wow, the tricks of the devil. That's what that means when it says the, the evil scheming is another version says it's a trick the devil knows he can't come straight at us because he knows we know what he's up to but he will come in and pull tricks and do little things to try to get at us when we don't understand what you know when we don't have the word and we're not grounded in the word he can come in and he can pull tricks on us Joy's favorite day of the year, April 1. So she can pull tricks on people. She loves it. Guess what? It's April Fool's Day every day of the year with the devil. He is always trying to pull tricks on us. He is always trying to trick us, to trip us up. Psalm 91 calls it, protects us from the snares of the evil one. He sets traps. He'll send some of your buddies along and say, hey, let's go drink a beer. Hey, there's this really cute girl really likes you. You need to come with me. I'll introduce you to her. <laughs> the devil is always, I mean, he hooked me on a couple, on one. Not a couple, he hooked me on one. That one backfired on him. <laughs> that one backfired on him. That you may be able to stand against the wiles, the evil schemings, the tricks of the devil. What? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Our fight's not against each other. but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness, wickedness in the heavenly places. Remember what I was talking? God sent the answer the first day, but the evil wickedness in the heavenlies stopped that angel and fought with him for 21 days. You know what would have happened 20 days in if Daniel would have quit praying? He'd have never got the answer. He never ceased praying and asking God. And I can hear him saying, God, I know you hear me. I know you hear me. You have answered me before. Why are you not answering me now? It's because the devil didn't want that answer to come. Because the devil knew that that answer concerned him in the last days concerned his future and he didn't want the people knowing what his future was folks we win I don't care how bad it looks how bad it seems the end of the book says we win he's beaten he's defeated he just don't want you to know it and he will do anything in his power to keep you from figuring out that he is defeated. That he is no more than a speck of dirt on the bottom of your foot. And God said that in the Garden of Eden. He said you will trample on the head of the serpent. Joy uses a big long stick. 
She thought God ought to have just destroyed them all right there in the garden and been done with it. But that's not God. That's not God. Because He gave you a free will to decide. He could have done it. But then you would have been like a zombie. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, we're not. It's more than that. Ephesians 2, 2. Well, let's just go back to one. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, curse of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that the Bible calls the devil the prince of the power of the air. He is in control of everything between here and heaven. And he will do everything he can do to stop your answer from God. Don't quit praying. Put on the armor of God. Gird yourself up. Get ready for a fight. Because this is a battle, folks. It's a fight. Jesus didn't promise you a walk through the rose garden. He actually said, the world hates me. They're going to hate you more. How do we prepare ourselves? How do we defend ourselves against that? By putting on the whole armor of God. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, sit down. Is that what it says? Having done all to stand, stand therefore. When you've done all you can do, just keep doing what you've been doing. Just like Daniel. He did all he could do. He prayed. He asked God. He seeked God for the answer. It took 21 days. It might take 20 years. It might take a lifetime, but that answer will come. It will come if you don't give in to the devil and quit praying. We have got to continue to pray. Having done all to, all to stand, stand therefore. Having gird your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the evil one, of the wicked one, of the devil. You will be able to do it if you prepare and put on your armor every day. It don't say that God's going to do it for you. It don't say that Jesus or the Holy Spirit's going to do it for you. It says you will be able to quench all, not some, all of the attacks of the devil. Take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. What's our sword? The Word of God, which is the Word of God. Now we're going to John chapter 1. What is the Word of God? Come on, pay me 
John chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. Who was, who is the Word? Jesus is the Word. He came and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ is our sword. And with Him, we can defeat anything the devil throws at us. Anything that the devil throws at us, we can defeat because we put on our armor every day being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Pray always in the Spirit. James chapter 4. And verse 7. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's another, that's another way we fight the devil. We resist him. We don't give in to him. We don't put up with his junk. We kick him in the head and send him going down the street crying. Amen? Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. If we resist the devil, he don't have any choice but to flee. We use the name of Jesus Christ. The devil, in the name of Jesus, my brother, who whipped your fanny on your front lawn, you get out of my life. You have no place here. I am a child of God. Jesus Christ whipped him for you so you don't have to. He went into his house, drug him out in the front yard or in the street, and whooped up on him severely. And God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, and he, the Spirit of God, lives in you. Resist the devil. He has to flee. Don't give in to his tricks. Put on the armor of God, and you can stand. And when you have done all to stand, just keep standing. Keep praying. When you think you're prayed out and you can't pray no more, if you ain't got the answer, keep praying. The answer's coming. Keep praying. The answer's coming. Amen. Father, I thank you for this word. Father, we just give you honor and glory. Father, we, I just pray that every day we put on our armor and every day we pick up our sword and we fight the devil in his cohorts and we give no place to them and we command them in Jesus name to leave our families alone we command him to leave these people on our prayer list alone he is defeated he has to listen to the name of Jesus and we give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus precious and holy name amen is anybody else hot? <coughs> oh, somebody forgot to turn the air conditioner on this morning. Honey, would you and Starla come?
What's today, Bonnie? Today is the. Uh, <laughs> I forgot last night. No, it didn't. No, you weren't here. No, you weren't here. Smoked pork. Ronnie was. Oh, oh, pork. Smoked pork. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like smoked pork. <laughs> it does. I think everything smells like that now. Well, it's it's been in the refrigerator with it, and and uh, actually the the deal got kind of set on. The the plastic bag, so the plastic bag is in the trash. The plastic bag is in the trash. We're gonna get a new plastic bag if we have any left over. So there's another one in the refrigerator. So anyway, this is communion, and yes, we did have communion last month. And I made the comment that even though she's not here, if I don't do communion, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> so if you want to pass everything out, then we'll we'll take together. Well, ain't got good. We are very blessed. Well, here lately, I've been about to preach myself happy. <laughs> it's fun to get excited in the presence of God. Amen. I heard that score. Got it. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I can multitask. <coughs> what was it? <coughs> I can multitask sometimes. <laughs> oh, Father. Wow. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When Jesus' body was broken, he was bringing healing for us. Isaiah 53 tells us that he was broken for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And by his stripes we are healed when we break this bread and take it we are asking Jesus to heal anything that is wrong in our bodies we are taking Jesus say and saying we know you took our place you paid for my sickness you paid for my iniquities you paid for my suffering you suffered so I didn't have to you took my place on the cross. I love that song that says, When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. He did that for me so that I don't have to be sick. He did that for you so that you don't have to be sick. You can tell the devil to take that sickness back because it's his. Give it back to him. Don't keep it. Amen. 
Father, we thank you for the healing that comes through the body, the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray healing complete and total in Jesus' name. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The blood of Jesus Christ covers our sins. When we stand before God, the only thing he is going to look for is that drop of blood on our heart that covers our sins. Father, I thank you for the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that covers our sin and washes us white as snow and delivers us from all our iniquities. And we give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As often as you drink this, eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, I thank you for the healing of and the salvation that comes to the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you for it, Father, and I give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen.